Morning, Heidi. Hello. How are you doing? How are you feeling? How's your arm? Um, uh, the pain, but okay. Uh, I could yep. sleep well. You could sleep okay? Yeah. Good. And how's your eye and face and everything? I still look colored. <laughs> Do you look like a panda? Yeah, many colors. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a long process. Well, huh. yeah, just take it easy now. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back, Cecilia. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Heidi just took off. I was asking Heidi how she was doing. She, I don't know if you talk, talk to her, but she had an accident a couple of days ago. She hurt herself. But she's still yes. coming to class. Yes, yes. Yeah, you were here. I think you heard about that. Oh. <sighs> okay. So, well, that was fun. Our little uh, geography games we had. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We'll see how many people are interested in this art class. Might not be as popular. My games classes tend to be more popular. <laughs> than my yes, class. but art is very instructive. Mm. Yeah, it's fun. I like talking about it. this. This is an interesting one. Um, talk about um, contemporary Tibetan art, which is interesting. Um, it's um, the plan was to showcase art from Tibet um, legally or something by 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 uh, ex uh, exhibiting it as anonymous anonymous art and not showing any names. But apparently, all the artists were okay with sharing their names. So um, that's kind of what it's about. Uh, we get to see some interesting pieces. Talk about it. Okay. Get this ready. <clears throat> ah, and we have a new uh, grammar skill, which I haven't taught on Colingo before. Where that's great. Um, it's not really that um, interesting, but uh, it is. It's nothing that hard, but it's still something different, so that's refreshing. Uh, Adaru? Yeah. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. And you? I'm doing great, thank you. How do I pronounce your name? Uh, my name is, you can say Bala. Oh, I can say Bala? Bala, yes, Bala. Okay. That your first name then? Yes, my first name is. Uh, my entire name is Adabu Bala. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. It's nice to meet you. Okay, thank you. And meet where you. are you from? Tell me about yourself. Okay, I come uh, from. Uh, Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you living yes. there now? Uh, yes, I live. Uh, I live here in uh, Congo, really? Kinshasa. Uh -huh. Wow, you're the first person I've had uh, in Congo that is from that lives in Congo. I've had a Congolese student that lives in Belgium, but never nobody in the country of Congo. So that's interesting. Mm, yes, yes, okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, mm. and what do you do? Uh, I am a statistician. You're teaching? S no, statistician, statistic. I uh, work in oh, uh, the statistical <laughs> office. Yes, okay. statistician. I see. Okay, and what kind of uh, industry are you doing statistics for? Statistic uh, for um, you know the National Bureau of Statistics. 
uh, we make mm -hmm. a census to to count uh, how many people are in the country to have a statistic uh, about uh, national account and uh, to uh, to 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 calculate the price index mm -hmm. to to show how the price are moving one by month by month mm -hmm. etc okay yes that's interesting good cool and uh, all right that's interesting okay um so uh uh, and wh what's the weather like where you are right now? Uh, act uh, currently, it is um, it, the rainy season. It is a dry season, but uh, the rainy season will uh, come uh, in next next month in October. Ah. The rainy okay. season will begin on October until uh, until uh, February. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And what about, is it pretty hot? Is it hot all year round there? Uh, currently it's not very hot because uh, it is about uh, 29 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. I don't know the equivalent in Fahrenheit. Uh, That's, but, pretty uh, warm. That's pretty warm. Yes, yes, not very hot. Yeah. Yes, it's it's nice. Uh, maybe not hot, but it's definitely warm, at least for me. Yes. I'm my yes. name is Anthony. My name is Anthony. I live in Atlanta, USA, and it's um it's a warmer city in the United States, but not as warm as where you are probably. So, <clears throat> but it's good to meet you. Welcome to our class. Uh, talk about art today. And uh, so, how long have you been uh, studying here with Kalinga? I don't think I met you yet. Uh, me? Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Uh, I start uh, just uh, yesterday. Oh, okay. Great. So yes, yes, yes. I am new in Kalinga. Mm -hmm. How did you hear about it? Uh, just um, I was. Um, Looking for um, how to 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 meet people to discuss in English. Uh, I uh, so with Google, I uh, I tap Google uh, classes English classes, mm -hmm. and uh, I I see Colungo. I open the page and I I read. So it was a uh, I can say uh, just because uh, by internet. Because uh, internet, Google uh, have uh, uh, I have found this solution with Google, so I say I will try to see. And uh, right now, I can say that uh, I'm very happy to 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 find it because uh, uh, it uh, allow me to meet a lot of people, to 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 share, uh, to discuss with a lot of uh, people from a lot of country. And uh, what I can say is because it's my second days of uh, second day of uh, this Kalungo and uh, until now I'm very happy. I found it Good. very useful. Yes, Excellent. yes. Yeah, great. Glad you found us. Um, <clears throat> I'd like you to meet uh, some other students that are here today. If uh, you ladies will introduce yourself, please, to uh, to uh, Bala. So Cecilia, will you introduce yourself? Certainly. <clears throat> My name is Cecilia. I'm from Uruguay, a small country in South America. As I have learned, we have sent some soldiers to Congo. Yeah, I hope we haven't made a mess. Uh, we also send uh, UPAs um, that are um, uh, containers for water and um, 
we are a small country between Argentina and Brazil. I'm 49 years old. I joined Colingo last December. I'm a student English teacher. I work with teenagers ages 13 to 15, but I'm doing this year my practice with 18 years old. And I love Colingo because I, it allows me to meet people from all around the world and teachers from different English-speaking countries. All right. That's Cecilia. And Wafa, will you introduce yourself, please? Yes. Hi. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Wafa. I'm from Saudi Arabia. And yes, that's all. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. So, um, so uh, we're gonna have an art class today. We're gonna talk about Tibetan art, and um, our grammar skill is a new one that we haven't talked about yet. In Colingo, it's not necessarily hard, but it's a new one, so that's refreshing. We'll talk about demonstratives and distributives. Um, we'll talk more about that later. So, um, I just want to start by asking if, uh, just having a little discussion about art. Um, what is, uh, the best art exhibit you've ever seen? I guess. Any art exhibit that, um, is the most memorable or something? What is the best art exhibit you've ever seen? Or maybe, or the most memorable art exhibit you've seen, or the most recent, your choice, <laughs> and talk about it. Hello. Yeah. 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 Hey. I, I don't know. I haven't uh, cut uh, what uh, mm -hmm. what you, you what we want uh, us to 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 say. Oh, I was just wondering. To talk uh, about. Have you ever been to a museum, art museum? Ah, okay, okay. Uh, born for me. I really not very. Uh, um, Perhaps because uh, in our country there isn't uh, much of a uh, museum, uh, just, uh, but uh, in, um, because I'm here, me, I'm here uh, in DRC just uh, since uh, six months before I was uh, in Niger, in oh. Niger. Niger is in West Africa, yes, yes. Are you from? For that, my country. Yes, yes, my country, my native country is uh, Niger. Oh. I'm here in DRC since six months, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and by the way, uh, what... So I, I, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. What, what you say? No, I was here. Oh, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, yes, yes, no, just uh, I, I wanted to say that... Uh, in my um, in my country, we in uh, Niger, where uh, I uh, I lived before, uh, we have a museum in which we can find a uh, lot of uh, interesting thing from uh, the desert in Sahara, because you you know uh, before uh, being uh, before being a Sahara, it was. Um, there was a lot of, uh, it was in the um, previous uh, period, it was, uh, how to describe it, it was a, there was a rainy, it was very rainy in this area before like being a uh, desert. Like a jungle? Yes, 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 jungle, before uh, the, the being, now it is a, uh, is uh, only a Sahara. There is no, mm -hmm. no, no trees. Anything. There is no, nothing here. Yeah. 
but uh, lot of in the past period there was lot of animals who live there. So in the museum they they have found the um, the 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 dinosaur. I don't know if it is uh, the word in English, dinosaur. Dino yep, dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Dinosaur. Yes, yes, yes. So they they found uh, uh, dinosaur. Uh, they 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 bring it at the museum to to show how in the past this area was. Okay, so it's like a science museum, a history and science museum. Yes, and, yes, uh, exactly. That's cool. Yeah, great. Uh, I forgot to ask you, um, what is your main uh, native language? My main uh, native English um, language is uh, is Hausa, but uh, I at school okay. we learn French. So Hausa and French. Yes, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. I'm just curious. All right. Um, okay. Interesting. Very cool. What about you, Cecilia? Do you have, have you, what's, can you, do you have, do you have a favorite exhibit or a best exhibit, like art exhibit? I think. So that's a new, maybe I should be typing this word here. Yes, I liked in, like in, in Paris, um, the Musée de Versailles, mm -hmm. the Impressionists, Mm -hmm. And I liked in London the Natural History Museum, the part of the children's area where they could explore the uh, birth, how we, the conception, because I found it very natural as the, okay. the, the yeah. name of the museum. That's cool, yeah. <laughs> Cool, yeah, that's important for people to see. I suppose that was would be an interesting, uh, interesting exhibit, especially for young people that don't maybe don't know much about it. But the Musée d'Orsay, and then the uh, London. Uh, what is it again? History, the London, uh, Natu Natural History Museum in London. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've never been to London, so. I haven't seen that. So what did you um, so what did you like about so you liked uh, the Natural History Museum because it um, it kind of showed people what life is all about. Yes, <laughs> children about you... interaction because it was interactive Good. for children. Yes, and Museo de Orsay because I was brought up in a home and in a school where they both my parents and my school teachers introduced me to impressionistic art and being there in touch with the act with the real paintings was incredible mm -hmm. because I could tell my husband before getting close to the to the signs of the of the pictures that actually explain who they were and what was the time I, I didn't remember the time by heart, but I could remember more or less who they belonged to. I could tell my husband, this one belonged to Manet, this one to Renoir, this one. And my husband was, wow, impressed. And I didn't mean to impress him, but I kept this in my uh, yeah. long-term memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a lot of those artists have a real uh, signature style, like a really distinct Distinct style. So, so we have two. So. so we have two vocabulary where it's exhibits. An exhibit is a when uh, in a museum when they have a special showing of art is called an exhibit. Like maybe it'll change every year or something, or every few months they'll change a new to a new exhibit. So maybe there'll be an impressionist exhibit. And distinct. What does distinct mean? That outstands. Uh, I, say that again. Outstanding. 
Yes, that add sounds that are remarkable for something. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, something that's you know, distinct. Uh, something that's distinctive. Something that's yeah stands out, is different, and it's got its own unique um, qualities, which makes it memorable. So um, Cecilia was able to to tell which painting was done by which painter because each painter has a distinct style that you can that you can detect when you look at it. Even if you've never seen the painting before, mm -hmm. you can still tell who painted it because of their distinctive style. Um, yes, and what about you, Wafa? Have you ever, you ever go to art museums? I didn't have been to a museum before. You never, you never been to a museum yet. No. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to someday? Yes. All right. Um, are there are there museums there in uh, Medina? Yeah, there is a lot. Mhm. Mm oh, maybe someday. Uh, okay. Let's talk about uh, grammar for a second here. Um, we're talking about the difference between this and that, those, these, demonstratives, diminutives, stuff like that. We haven't talked about that yet with me, at least. I'm sure you've talked about, I'm sure you've learned this stuff before. This might still be review, but as far as Kalingo goes, this will be kind of new, so that's interesting. Um, so I would like, I would like uh, to read this together. And Bala, will you begin, please? Will you read what you see here on the screen? Okay. Yes, first. A demonstrative pronoun replaces a noun. The replaced nouns identify identity can be understood from the context. It indicates whether the noun is singular or plural, and whether it is near or far from the speaker. We have, uh, mm -hmm. for singular, mm -hmm. for near object, we have this, and for far, we have that. For plural, near, this, and far is those. Yep. Examples. This is a rose. This is a rose. So it is a, a singular near, yes. That is a, a, a daisy. Daisy? Uh-huh, daisy. Is exact? Yeah. I don't know. What That's daisy correct. mean? Daisy. What's a daisy? Anyone know what a daisy is? This is a daisy. Yes, it's a kind, a kind of flower that is got white petals, and in the center, it's got the yellow pollen. But not all of them. Some are yellow petals, and the yellow and orange, orangeish pollen in the center, but they are no, thin okay. petals. Mm -hmm. Daisy flower. Yep. Mm, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. These are pretty flowers. Those are some big sunflowers. Okay, good. Thank you. So, uh, we've done. We've. I know we've talked about this and that and these and those. Well, we've. I know we've used these words, but. Um, we're going to learn more about them and what they what what they mean and when to use them correctly. I see Murat is here. Hello. Good finally, evening. And finally, I know how to spell your name. And you finally yes. in your own account. Great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how I are you? I know how to spell your. I'm good. I always had to remember remember your name, and I never knew how to actually spell it. It's okay. <laughs> so. Um, 
How was your weekend? It's been very boring. <laughs> Too much rain. Uh, yeah. Okay. The weather is cool. Cold. Oh, really? Mm. Yes. <laughs> well, that's all right. You can stay inside and be warm and uh, and learn yes. English with us. Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, we're learning about demonstratives and diminutives, uh, which are really big words for very, really easy grammar. <laughs> so let's talk. Um, we're reading through these... Uh, descriptions here. Uh, will you continue, Cecilia? Yes. Uh, third, the... Ah, no, second, perdón. Sorry. <laughs> uh, second, demonstrative pronouns can also be used as demonstrative adjectives. They are identical, but... Marcelo, ¿podría cerrar la puerta? Sorry. But a demonstrative pronoun stands alone, while a demonstrative adjective qualifies a noun. This uh, states, no, tastes good, demonstrative pronoun. That book looks familiar, demonstrative adjective noun. Mm -hmm. And you can read the third one, too, actually. Okay. Third, demonstrative pronouns are used to indicate all the uh, members of the representative group. Each, each, every, either, and neither are called descript descriptive pronouns because they refer to persons or things taken one at a time. This distributive, distributive pronouns are always singular and are followed by singular verbs. Each one of you will be assigned a number before the race. Either of you could win the race, depending on how much you train. Neither of those girls could beat you. Okay, so um, so we have demonstrative and distributive. It's If you think about demonstrative, it's, it's to demonstrate you this and that. And distributive, you're distributing each, either, neither. Um, fourth, Wafa. Are you are you there, Wafa? Okay. Uh, I can't hear you, Wafa. So maybe either you're muted or maybe you're having internet problems still. So I will have Bala, if you'll read the fourth one, please. The fourth. Is the and uh, are used two persons or things. To talk about more than two persons or things, we use non, no one, for neither, and any, all, every, for either. All of the dogs at the at the dog park needs water. None of the dogs feel like sitting in the shed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whoops. Um, now we have a long... Okay, so fifth... You can continue on with fifth, uh, Bala. Okay. The fifth, sometimes each of every have the same meaning, but sometimes they're not exactly the same. Sometimes each 
and every have the same meaning. Prices go up each uh, prices go up every year. Often they are not exactly the same. Each expresses the loss, the idea. No, each expresses the idea of one by one. It emphasizes individually. It emphasizes individually, individuality. Every is halfway between each and half and all. It sees things or people as singular, but in a group or in general. Every artist is sensitive as the artist. Each artist seen each artist artist seen sees things differently specific artist. Every soldier saluted as the president arrived. All the soldiers. The president gave each soldier a medal. Specific soldiers. Okay. It can be used in. F yes, okay. Yeah, good. Thank you. So each and every. Um, this is a long one, so we'll let Cecilia continue. Each can be used in front of of the verb or followed by of. The soldiers each receive a medal. The president spoke to each of the soldiers. Each is used to talk about two or more things. Uh, he was carrying a suitcase in each hand. There was a computer on each desk. Every is used to emphasize how often something happens. There is a plane to Bangkok every day. The bus leaves every day, every hour. Okay, good. And tiny little one here. We'll let you. Oh wait, uh, Marat, Marat, you can finish. Six. Distributive pronouns can also be used as distributive adjectives. Know that distributed adjectives are immediately followed by nouns. Each child received lots of gifts for Christmas. Either road leads to the railway station. Okay. Yes. Uh, distributed pronouns. All right. So just just a question because mm -hmm. I'm. Uh... I, I, I'm new. How how can uh, I see this text? I can uh, download it somewhere, or I don't um, know how to I do. Don't, to, I to don't do it have uh, a file. My own. Yeah, it's not a website. It's not. A, I don't have anything to share it with. I mean, you can find stuff like this on the internet, but the thing I was showing you is a special website that I can't. I have no way to share it. Uh, sorry, but. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, but you can find um, plenty of resources on online uh, to help study this stuff. Were there any uh, specific questions on uh, on this stuff? Demonstratives and distributives. Okay. No, that's okay. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, contemporary Tibetan art in this article here. Now this I can share because this is a, a website. So if you'd like to look at this on your own, you're able to hear. Oh, okay. And, and I'll Thank read, you. You're welcome. And I'll read this uh, to you and then we'll have a discussion afterwards. Um, Anonymous No More, bringing contemporary Tibetan art to the U.S. A groundbreaking museum exhibition features surprisingly candid artworks from a society in conflict and change. There are currently six million Tibetans still in Tibet, says curator Rachel Pereira Weingeist, and uh, we never get to hear from them, except through their art. Tibet, which has been occupied by China since 1951, is largely closed off from the Western world. 
travel outside of the country is restricted and there are staunch limitations on its exports. To help make Tibetan art more accessible to American audiences, Weingeist conceived the show Anonymous, Contemporary Tibetan Art. She invited Tibetan artists living all over the world to submit their work anonymously for the exhibition, believing that this option would allow artists to express themselves without any repercussions. When she began organizing the ex exhibition, however, she found that the opposite was true. Despite possible consequences, all of the artists wanted to sign their work. So what are they saying here exactly? Um, what are they saying about Tibet and artists? Um, so what does this mean, staunch limitations on its exports? That's some kind of hard words. Uh, what's, what does that mean, so staunch? Strict. I guess it's yes. Yeah. My my guess is uh, just to say it is very difficult to yeah. to export. It's a restriction. Right. Like yeah. Uh, yeah, and like Cecilia said, strict. To yeah, strict or yeah, it makes it very difficult. You can't. It's, they have a lot of limitations. It's not. They have. Um, they're very limited. They're not allowed to do a lot of things. Um, and so, so this, uh, so this person made up this idea to have an exhibit of this artwork, and she thought that the only way to do it is if they were anonymous. What does anonymous mean? Without being signed. Yes, but yes. what 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 did she find when the when she started organizing it? The artist wanted to to sign them. Right, so they started signing their work anyway. So Ooh. even though there might have been, even though they might they might get in trouble, they might get in trouble, but they signed it anyway. So here we have something here, uh, one of the pieces, mineral pigment on canvas called Mona Lisa. Uh, the uh, resulting show is a candid depiction of modern Tibetan life and is one of the first museum exhibitions of contemporary Tibetan art to be presented in the United States. It features more than 50 works of sculpture, painting, mixed media, and video by 27 artists. Anonymous is on view at the Dorsky Museum at SUNY New Pulse through December 15th and will travel to the Fleming Museum at the University of Vermont and the Queen's Museum of Art in New York next year. The majority of artworks in the exhibition are on loan from the Shelley, uh, excuse me, from Shelley and Donald Rubin, who donated a vast collection of Himalayan art to the Rubin Museum of Art in New York. They are also the founders of the Shelley and Donald Rubin Foundation, a philanthropic organization that has conducted seminars on Tibetan literature and art, generated online art databases, and launched a campaign to compile comprehensive biographies of Tibetan Buddhist and bone masters, uh, among other projects. Weingeist is a senior advisor to the foundation and has helped promote Tibetan art by bringing artists from that region to uh, the Rubens Art in Artist in Residency program in Vermont and organizing exhibitions such as this. Here's another uh, piece uh, called Mr. XXX, which is a digital print, silkscreen, collage, and, and acrylic on canvas. So this is mixed media. Seems to be some kind of a statement, maybe. Much of anonymous centers around the conflicts taking place between Tibetans and the Chinese government, as the piece we just saw. Under Chinese rule, Tibetans have faced religious and cultural persecution. In fact, Tibetan names aren't even recognized by the Chinese government. 
on official ID cards, names are replaced with titles such as FNU, first name unknown, or simply XXX. Artist Zham Sang comments on this practice in his 2010 depiction of a Tibetan ID card, Mr. XXX. The personal information, sex, birth date, birthplace is filled out, but the name just reads XXX. The photo portion of the card features a portrait of a futuristic looking robot, suggesting that not only is this the present state of Tibet, but possibly the future as well. In Vests, Orange and Purple, a 2008 piece by Zurich based artist Kisang Lamdak, whose uh, two glossy vests made of melted plastic hang side by side on the gallery wall. The use of this material is an allusion to the self immolations that have taken place in recent years to protest the Chinese occupation of Tibet. There have been approximately 120 of these demonstrations in the last four years alone. Um, what does immolations mean? I don't even know what that means. I want to make sure I understand exactly. Immolation is yeah, when they... Immolation. Oh, yeah, set yourself on fire. Yeah, that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. Emulation is the when uh, people uh, are putting uh, dynamite to for their example, bodies. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and go or, into public or, places uh, or yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, they make themselves lo losing their life. They mm -hmm. lost their life uh, by by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a suicide and also a statement as well. Um, though the tone of uh, of oh, they're they're missing an article here. So though the tone of the exhibition is at times solemn, a sense of optimism and pride is present as well. Many artists here assert their hybrid identities through their work, blending Tibetan traditions with contemporary imagery. Another piece by Lamdark, for example, features a portrait of the Buddhist oracle Dorj Drakten uh, sticking out his tongue. This gesture is an ancient Tibetan greeting that is still used today. Uh, Lamdark juxtaposes that image with a portrait of another recognizable figure also known for sticking out his tongue. The rock musician Gene Simmons. This piece is titled "Dorj Drakten and Kiss." <laughs> That's kind of awesome. Uh, melted plastic and acrylic. And in the painting, faces of Buddha. Artist Ang Sang riffs on the Tibetan artistic practice of icono uh, iconometry, which involves drawing the Buddha using a precise template. Sang incorporates the iconometric grid as an outline of the Buddha on, into the canvas. Uh, but rather than depicting the Buddha's face, he filled the space with images of famous historical and fictional characters in including Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, Barack Obama, and Che Guevara. Who else? Michael Jackson? Mm. <laughs> uh, Marilyn Monroe. Confucius. <laughs> um, by the way, what does this mean, riffs? Artists, the artist riffs on the Tibetan artistic practice of iconometry. Iconometry. What does it mean to riff on something? Um, this is something. This is an artistic verb used in music mm -hmm. and in art. To riff. I to riff. Um, I don't know. Me too. Yeah. Did you say something, Cecilia? That I don't know. I don't okay. know. Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a newer word. It's kind of a slang a slang word, which means, in this case, it means um, to kind of it's like a play on 
it's like playing with uh, an idea. If you, that's what it is. It's playing with an idea. And so you're playing with the idea. You're kind of almost, it's almost like a, almost like um, taking uh, something that's, uh, that is already in practice and then kind of making it, doing something different with it. In this case, kind of almost, almost making a joke out of it. Um, so it's like, yeah, playing with an idea, I guess, to riff on something. This remix mm -hmm. of Eastern and Western traditions is perhaps best expressed in Rob Kar Wangchuk's 2013 painting, Spiritual Mind and Modern Technology. Here, the Buddha is situated in a contemporary metropolitan landscape. Below him are taxis, cars, and buses. Behind him is a silhouette of the Manhattan skyline, and above him is a clock. An apple rapaces his top knot, and tags reading the Home Depot and Best Buy hang from his stretched earlobes. The image is a reminder uh, that it is possible to appreciate both past and present and to achieve harmony between two distinct cultures. Very creative. Mm. Mm. Another acrylic on canvas. So, May I ask you two words from the passage? Yes. Um, uh, one is. Let me see. Situated from the top knot. Uh huh. Top. Top knot, yes. Knot is noodle. The knot is what you do with two pieces of thread and you get yeah. a knot. A top knot, I don't know. Uh, um, all they're saying, it's just like it sounds, it's top knot. It's like a hairstyle top knot. Ah, uh, yes, I got it. Like a bun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And, and the, the other one, could you put back the text yeah. so I tell you? Let me see the other word was. Is, um, I think it's that one, yes. Uh, on the fourth line, the first word. Uh, seal, I can't pronounce it. That one, yes. Yeah, silhouette. I know it. Uh, why don't you tell I know, silhouette, I know. Bala. No, no, I know. Oh, Phoenix, you know it? Okay. I know. No, silhouette, I know. Silhouette, I know. Oh, you do know. No, okay. yes, I know silhouette. Then it was just uh, okay, the man. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you very much. No um, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. So, any uh, other questions about that? No, no, not from me. Okay. Um, so, uh, um, have you ever seen artwork like this before? Or uh, how can we describe it? Um, Murat, what do you think? Are you still there, Murat? I haven't heard from you in a while. Maybe not. What else? Um. I think it's modern. Mm -hmm. And I didn't expect really that. I mean, I expected that they would uh, go against communism and the communism re regime. But I didn't expect that they would play with Buddhism. Mm. Yeah. Yes, me too. Because uh, for me, the Buddhism is uh, because it is um, their um, religion, their faith. So I, uh, I don't uh, think that they, they will uh, paint on, on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I, yeah, it makes you ask. It's like it makes you ask other questions about these people. You know, um, you know, are they? Is this the voice of everyone, or is this just a few people that are that are thinking this way? Or I mean, what does this say about about their politics or their religion, or you know? But perhaps um, in 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 this way they want to 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 express uh, their um, that uh, how to 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 show to others that they exist that mm -hmm. uh, Tibetan right. people exist they have their own um, uh, their own culture. Mm -hmm. Which is different to to China's uh, culture. Perhaps uh, it uh, it was uh, why they, they 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 did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, well, yeah, I guess one thing that the things maybe the most interesting thing if you think about like Tibetan art and culture. I mean, I always you know I always think about like ancient you know, culture, ancient art when thinking about Tibetan. But this kind of reminds people, yeah, we're here and we're still doing new new stuff too. We're doing our own thing. We have, you know, you know, you think about Tibetan art and you I always think about stuff that happened thousands of years ago, you know, Buddhist art from a long time ago. But of course, um, you know, other things are happening there. So it's maybe an, an important exhibit to make sure that we realize you know, what people are doing today. Yes, and probably because they are artists, they are open to the world and they are connecting uh, all, um, all the world to their own world. Mm -hmm. That's why they are able to, to be autocritical. Mm. By the by, this I mean that they are able to to criticize their own religion, and that's probably why I am like moved by how how can they there touch their icons like Buddha? But well, because uh, what we receive here in in my culture is that they worship so much their dilemma and. They try to protect themselves, their their traditions from from their attacks that uh, that seeing how they play play uh, meaning play is that they they are uh, showing that they are able to take these icons of culture and. And take it to to colors that are different from these um, um, traditional orange colors from Tibet, and <laughs> use other colors and uh, um, use uh, these pictures from from Amer from the states. Like I think I even saw Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and Che Guevara from a leader from the guerrillas from Latin America. I mean, different icons from all over the world. Yeah, there's mixing icons. Mm -hmm. like, but what what, uh, like what to... uh, also? No, I say I say uh, what also I found uh, very uh, weird in um, is. Um, what uh, the Chinese government do to to those people? Because uh, if uh, even uh, on their identity card mm -hmm. card uh, they 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 don't uh, accept to put uh, their names, the real names. It's uh, yeah. I found it very very tight. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, by the way, I'm. I have to go now. We're, we're out of time now. Uh, but uh, 
I didn't have time to uh, to assess this our, our grammar skill, but we'll do that next time. But uh, I have to go to my next class. I have a music class now that I have to teach. So thank you guys for coming and good work. Uh, it's nice to meet you, Bala. I hope to see you in a future class. And uh, okay, thank you. See you guys next time. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, thanks. Very much. Yes, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.